and okay now it started um so i will start and talk a bit about the denmark and as you all can see um this is denmark uh, i hope everybody can see the screen and we have some neighbors we have uh, norway sweden germany and united kingdom um and this is the danish flag and as you can see this is a table flag so often when you have birthdays you have this flag out when we celebrate the birthdays and we're lucky that lucas he could join us today and it's actually his birthday today um so uh some uh, my computer and i'm going to share the video and while i share the video i will talk because eh, if it wants to work Hopefully there's no commercial. There probably is going to be a commercial. And there is a commercial of Danish chewing gum. So here are some places. Um, I will mention a few things about it. I think the first place is a place called Moons Clint which is a cliff made out of chalk um, and it's quite far and it's um, we have three places we have Jutland we have Funen oh, and we have uh, Sealand and this is on Sealand all the way down um, I'm ho I don't know if it's lagging I hope it is not um, but this is one of these very popular places also for Danish people to come and visit a place called Moons Clint. And as you can see, there's uh, obviously we have a lot of water around us, so we have a lot of ports. And the next one is Jua Summerland. This is a park where it's also a very popular place uh, for Danish people to come and tourists, where you can see we have a lot of rides. And yeah, that is. That much. And the next one, that is a place called the Old City in Aarhus. And there you can see all the different type of architecture. This is how the houses were built a long time ago. And it's still very popular. A lot of places in Denmark still have buildings that look like this. And then we have the Little Mermaid, which was, most of you know, the fairy tale from Disney, the Little Mermaid. And it's the, the story itself was created by uh, the Danish uh, writer, who is uh, Hans Christian Andersen. And the mermaid is much smaller in, when you come and see it. Uh, Lange Linie, that is a place in Copenhagen, very popular. It's a place where you can go shopping and a lot of restaurants. And of course, it's one of our ports where a lot of the ships uh, come. And, uh, come. Um, we have the Royal Opera House, which is where this is a Danish architect uh, who made it supposedly one of the more uh, uh, modern uh, opera houses um, where we have a lot of theater and shows. And then we have a place called Frederiksborg Castle. And this is a castle that's very, uh, it was made many years ago for one of the kings. And it's very um, popular to see because it's in this Baroque fashion, the way it has been built. And then also with the gardens, which is very special. We have a place called Christian Sport Palace, which is where the queen has banquets and also where uh, we have a democracy where all the politicians, they meet normally and discuss politics. Then we have Legoland, and this is uh, also one of uh, something Denmark is very proud of because Lego is very popular worldwide and was made by Danish, uh, a Danish family, I think. And then we have, last but not least, Tivoli, which is also a, a park, uh, which is very popular, um, which it has a lot of different rides, but also historical and a lot of sightseeing things that are very popular to see. So this was very short, um, some places to see if you ever come to visit Denmark, which I hope will, will, will happen, uh, hopefully after Corona. And then another thing, 
I, um, I think a lot of you think when you think of Denmark, you think of Vikings. And I wrote horns or no horns. And it's because in a lot of movies, you always see that they would have helmets with horns. But actually, if you look at, at all the writings that have been, that most Vikings did not wear the helmets with horns. Just a little sneak peek information. Um, and then uh, we also have a monarchy. We have uh, the queen and uh, her late husband, he uh, passed away, uh, and her two sons. And um, Prince Frederick is the next one to take uh, the throne. And he found, I don't know if you also, if it was very international, uh, but in Denmark, it was very um, interesting when he found an Australian woman. And so, so it seems that a lot of the royal family, they, they often like to find people from, they're very international. They don't find Danish uh, wives or husbands, they find people from outside. Uh, and uh, the same with Prince Joachim, he found a French uh, wife. So, um, yes. And then we have our prime minister and we have a democracy and she is our now current uh, prime minister. Um, and they, uh, yeah. And I, yeah, what can I say? She's the second uh, female prime minister we've had. And another little uh, thing about Denmark is biking. I think most people, if you think about Denmark, uh, that biking and cycling is something we do a lot, um, even in the, in the countryside. But uh, they have, it's, it's, I think actually Denmark is known as the land or the uh, country with most uh, biking roads and places where you can bike. Um, and then a bit about Danish cuisine. Um, I've just chosen a few, and this is very popular in Denmark, uh, rye bread. We don't eat that much white bread, but rye bread, that's something we eat for lunch, dinner, for everything. And uh, then we have meatballs. And in Denmark, we actually, I of course, we're very international now, but uh, Typical old traditional Danish food is with a lot of potatoes. And then we have meatballs, I guess you can call it, and cabbage. And then we have some tartlets, which is also very popular with, uh, with chicken and asparagus. And this is probably what's most, I think a lot of foreigners, they think is very weird. I think most of my students, I can ask them, they think it's very tasty, so do I. And this is uh, basically, in, in Danish it's called fleskestai, but uh, no, steaked flesk, and that's actually pork meat. In Denmark, we have a lot of uh, pork, uh, pig meat that we eat. And this is actually uh, the, the pork rind, and then also with the skin. In Denmark, you can actually buy snacks that's called Fleskesfer, which are basically just, I guess you could say the pork skin, and maybe some of you think it's disgusting, but you, you deep fry pork skin, and that's what we eat as snacks. And then the last is something, oh, the picture's gone maybe, um, but hygge, and this is an expression that a lot of people, a lot of foreigners say is very, uh, unique about Denmark, I don't know if it is, uh, but it's about this, the way we're together, the socialness that we want to be together, we want to have a cozy time together. But yes, that is very short about a few things about Denmark. I'm going to stop sharing. And uh, then maybe I can get some of my students to share something about who they are, how old they are, and hobbies and stuff like that. So uh, should we start with Aunus? And something about the Danish language I also can mention is that um, a lot of the letters are actually, uh, you don't pronounce them. So normally I think with you, Aunus, normally if someone just looks at your name, they might say Agnes, but yeah. your name is actually pronounced Aunus, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yes, if you could tell us something about yourself, who are you? Yeah, as you said, my name is Agnes. I am 12 years old and I sing very much and I play ukulele. Mm -hmm. And um, and so what, what kind of music do you sing? That's different. 
Mm. And uh, last question. Um, do you? What was I going to ask? Um, Hugo, how would you explain Hugo? Uh, what do you do when you want to, you know, have some Hugo? Well, watch a good movie. Eat some snacks. I don't know. Oh, Alec uh, thank you, Agnes. Uh, Alexander, you had a question? I can't hear you, Alexander. I can't hear you. Okay. Um, then let's uh, move on to another student I have. Uh, let's take uh, Katrine. Hi. Katrine, tell us a little bit about you. Um, in English, my name is pronounced Catherine. Um, I'm 11 years old. I'm in fifth grade. I like to think about like because I'm very like interested in the American English and I like to like express a lot with my English when maybe I grow up I can maybe like work with English or something uh, I like to draw um, I actually don't know very much about myself. <laughs> uh, well, that's fine. What do you do when you want to have Hugo? Um, sometimes I play with Julie, like one of my friends who's also in here. Uh, and I write in these times, these Corona times, I watch some movies with my mom and play with and play games with my stepsisters and stuff like that. And uh, what kind of, because I'm thinking, I'm wondering whether it's the same computer games all the different countries play. What kind of computer game do you guys play? Um, either Minecraft or Roblox. Mm -hmm. well, uh, thank you, Katrina. Um, no problem. Uh, to uh, Silas, would you like to tell us something about yourself? Oh, Silas, I think you have to unmute. Can you hear me now? Oh, yes, I can hear you now, Alexander. Okay. Uh, Silas, before you start, maybe we should get Alexander's question. Um, no, no, he, he can finish. Uh, I can uh, talk after the, the Danish student. OK, perfect. Thank you. Then uh, Silas, tell us a bit about yourself. OK, as I said, my name is uh, Silas and I live in Denmark and I'm 11 years old. Uh, I live in Gisle Ingdrad uh, um, and uh, and I am an a student at Gisle for school. Mm -hmm. So what do you do when you when you're not at school? What do you spend your time with? Gaming for the most, but sometimes if like it does the day snow, I go out and throw snowballs in my little sister's face. Can you actually show us? I can see that the window in the back. We had a lot of snow today. Can you actually show us? The snow? Yes, of course. Um, we have we have a very late winter, I guess, because it's a lot of snow. And it's going to be snowing many days. I don't know, all of the white, that's all snow. Yeah, I was out later today and playing with my sister and I hit her like twice in the head. It's not nice. But what Can kind I of games do you play? What? What kind of games do you play? Do you also uh, play the same games as the girls? Well, today I played Roblox Adopt Me. Mm -hmm. Because my little sister was kind of depressed over that uh, sh her iPad 
did something in Roblox, so she needs to start all over again in all games. Mm -hmm. So, but normally I play Clash of Clans or Clash Royale. Okay. But uh, thank you, Silas. Uh, let's move on to Lucas. Could you tell a bit about yourself, Lucas? Yes, my name is Lucas, and I. Uh, Lucas, can you move your screen up? Uh, your your you know, yeah, the camera. We can see. Yeah. Um. So my name is Lucas, and I'm twelve years old, and I love to play CS:GO and fighting games. Must fighting games, World of Tanks. I uh, have many fighting game, fighting games, and I and I live in Denmark. Well, my home is in is in Gisla when I on bowling, bowling it number six and i love cake <laughs> nice. thank you luca hey who doesn't love cake um let's uh, end with uh, julia and then uh, should move on julia yeah um so my name is julie and um i'm 11 years old and um, I mostly uh, play games and uh, watch YouTube. And right now, in these days, I'm thinking of playing Call of Duty with my dad. You play computer uh, with your dad? Yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, and sometimes I also play with Catherine if he, she takes the phone, which she never does, uh, yeah. Um, we mostly play Roblox, and if it is great weather outside, I shoot with bow and arrows, and I stay on roller skates. Hmm? Yeah, and uh, sometimes I also watch a movie with my family, and we, yeah, and then I also love to eat and sleep. Thank you, Julia. Um, so I'm thinking that's maybe it from Denmark, and we should move on to Italy, if Italy is ready to, to Sorry. share. Sorry. Ellen. No, it's okay. It was Alexander. Alexander wanted to present. I'm so sorry, Alexander. Yes, sorry. Uh, because I, I have uh, lessons in an half an hour and I would like to, to make my part. My students, uh, I, they can stay for a little longer, but that, uh, perhaps it's better if I present now. Because mm -hmm. in a half an hour, I have to, to leave. Okay. I think okay. I think uh, that's, that's a good you, idea. Okay, can you give me the the, the control to to to yes. put my presentation? You are now a presenter. You can share with us. Okay. Uh, okay. Are you uh, seeing? Yes. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, this is uh, um, our school, the Escola Básica Secundária Dr. Angela Augusta Silva. It's in Funchal. Um, we we are going to to um, to know something about Portugal. Also, um, Portugal is a country since it's a, the the oldest country in the Europe with its frontiers defined. And um, we are uh, famous because we have famous uh, explorers that discover much parts uh, in the world. Someone is with the mic on. 
oggetto deve scrivere CSA deve 10 febbraio 2021. It's Italian, I think. <coughs> ok. Uh, you can see in, the, in this uh, slide, you can see that uh, Portugal is um, the mainland, the continental part, and we have two archipelagos. The one of them is Azores and the, the other is Madeira. And we, we are here. I don't know if you, if you, can, you can see the, the mark. Madeira is here. Okay? You are listening to me? Yes, yes. teacher. Yes. Okay. Yes. I can. This, this is uh, our island. Uh, Funchal, where is the, the school, is over here. And the island have lots of points of interest. Um, some of them are very, uh, very uh, funny. But we have uh, beautiful landscapes. And uh, um, the sea all around us is uh, marvelous also. And you, you will see, I hope, some of them when you come to Madeira. And this is one of the edges of our island. And it, uh, the Portuguese are here since the uh, 15th century. This is a picture of Funchal. And uh, um, the archipelago, archipelago of Madeira uh, includes another island uh, like Porto Santo, Desertas, and uh, the Wild Islands. All of them are um, part of the archipelago of Madeira. Um, Madeira is one, um, one um, of the most ancient forests in the world. It's called Lauri Silva. It's classified as World Natural Heritage. This, this picture shows a, a part of it. And um, in uh, gastronomy, we have some local uh, food like uh, um, beef in a, in a steak and black scabbard fish. It's uh, a, a very common uh, uh, meal here in uh, Madeira, along at, with honey, honey cake. And another is uh, a bread, it's called Boldo do Caco, it's very, very nice. Popular drinks here are poncha, it's very strong, it, it seems like orange, but, but orange juice, but, but it isn't. And the Madeira wine, is more or less like port wine. I don't know if you all know it. Main cultural events here are the car carnival and the flower festival we, we have in April. And of course, the New Year's Eve of Madeira is uh, well uh, known because of these fireworks. They are absolutely beautiful. We have also a Madeira Wine Festival. Our school. Our school is this. You can see in this picture. Is the this school? This is the main entrance of the school. With the COVID, you you can see by the mask you, you the students are wearing. We have uh, almost uh, 100 and 400 students. 1,400 students. 210 teachers, 67 school staff. And we have a lot of um, areas, uh, swimming pools, pavilions, and um, other uh, places, a conference room, garden. We have a garden, we have a vegetable garden who is uh, taken care of by, by students. And we have this view of uh, more or less this view of the uh, Fonchal Bay. You can see more of uh, our um, school here. Uh, let me see. OK. On this video.
And that is our school. Everybody uh, are hearing me? Yes. Yes. Yes. Yeah. OK, I hope you have uh, like it. This is our, our it's like a day in our school is normally. But with a, fa a fast record um, on the video. Um, Ellen, can I, I present my students now? Yes, that would be lovely. OK, we can start, start by um, Ruben. Are you listening? Yes. Can you talk now? Yeah. Introduce yourself. So I'm Ruben. I'm 13 years old and I live in Funchal, Madeira. And my hobbies are singing. I love to sing and uh, dance. And I, I play an instrument, a traditional Madeira instrument called Briguinha, which is like an ukulele but it's it has our material touch okay have you finished yeah i think so okay well now i can uh, we can hear uh, madalena okay uh, i'm 14 years old i play volleyball um <laughs> I love watch movies and series. Uh, I go. I like to go out with my friends, and that's only that. Okay. So let's hear. Good. Let's hear now, Corina. Are you there? Yes. Yes. Uh, my name is Corina and I'm 14 years old. I live in Portugal, but I'm from uh, Moldavia. I like to watch movies and drop. I practice judo uh, three years. Uh, I like my school and my friends. That's all. OK, now we can uh, hear uh, Ivana. Okay, hi, my name is Ivana. I'm 13 years old. I live in Portugal, but I'm in Venezuela. I like to play volley and tennis. I love to watch movies, series, and I love going out with my friends. Uh, Ivana, I can see, uh, see you. You are with the, the camera on. Yes. Ah, okay. <laughs> we are seeing you. Have you finished? Yes. OK, let's hear um, Alexandre. Alexander. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, you can, you can speak. Okay. OK, so my name is Alexandre. I live in Madeira Island, Portugal. I have uh, two hobbies, which is playing mostly Roblox and Brawl Stars. And I have a very unique hobby, which is plane spotting. I don't know if you guys heard about it, but I take pictures of uh, airplanes. I want to be a pilot when I grow up. Um, I have a YouTube channel, and uh, you, um, and that's it. Okay. And the final student is Victoria. Are you there? Victoria. Yes. Okay. Um. Hi, my name is Victoria. I am from Venezuela. Uh, I don't I volley to play tennis. Yes. And um, uh, you are here in Madeira. How much time? Sim. Uh, Quanto tempo estás aqui na Madeira? É... Um ano? Yes. Ah, ok. Um, some, so, um, actually, I think that uh, only uh, Ruben and... Uh, uh, Ruben... Uh, and that's it, only Ruben is uh, from Madeira, I think. 
because the others are. Um, no, I'm uh, from Madeira, teacher. Sorry? I'm from Madeira. Yeah, Ruben, yes. No, Alexander. I was Alexander. Okay. Uh, but uh, the others are uh, from other countries and they. they I'm they, from Madeira. Sorry, so, so, the Madeira. Yes, but uh, they they uh, they speak uh, with each other most of the time with in the Spanish because of the their fathers, I think, and um, but they they are very good kids. Okay, and that, that's my presentation. Thank you, and um, yeah, should we go on to Italy? I don't know. You had a leave soon, yeah. but uh, can you okay. hear me? Can you hear yeah. me, Alan? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm going to present uh, my staff and my students, and then these students will uh, give the presentation about Italy. Uh, my name is Maura Lucarelli, Maura, and I am an Italian teacher. Uh, I work in Villanova, and Villanova is near Rome. Rome is the capital of Italy. Uh, Villanova is 40 kilometers from Rome. And I leave the words to my students and they will introduce themselves and then they will present uh, their work about Italy. OK, and so Emanuela, yeah, Emanuela is going to share, to share okay. the file. And the students are going to introduce themselves. Leonardo. Um, yes. Hello, my name is uh, Leonardo. I'm uh, 13 years old uh, and I'm from uh, Italy and I live in Rome, precisely. Mm -hmm. uh, so my favorite hobby is uh, watching uh, movies on Netflix. Okay. Federico? Hi, my name is uh, Federico. I'm 13 years old and uh, I'm, uh, I live uh, in Italy. My favorite hobby is uh, play a lot of games on uh, PlayStation 4, uh, <laughs> Roblox and Minecraft. Okay, thank you. Sofia? Hi. Hi, my name is Sofia. I'm 13 years old and uh, I'm from Italy. I live in Villanova. I love uh, watch film and uh, I practical as volleyball sport. Hi, Simone. I'm Simone, I'm 13 years old and my hobbies are skateboarding, playing basketball and soccer and uh, streaming with my Twitch channel and uh, playing with my steering wheel uh, on games and uh, watching movies and series. Okay. And Simone. Simone? Si, yes. Okay, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Simone. I'm 13 years old. And my favorite hobby are playing football and basketball and streaming with my Teach channel. Annalisa, Laura. Annalisa. Hi, I'm Annalisa. I'm almost 14 okay. years old, and uh, I love watch anime and listen to music, and uh, I love uh, also playing games like Minecraft. <clears throat> okay, so uh, Maura. Si? Yeah. Uh, uh, maybe um, Leonardo. You can't see. You can't see because I put. Uh, uh, the presentation. If Leonardo um, open his uh, camera, uh, they can see him. Uh, my camera is already open. Yes, of course, but I I, I, I shared bef uh, before, so uh, they can't to see before. Well, they know you now. Okay, no problem, no problem. Thank you. Thank you. Start start the presentation. Okay. Okay. Um, wait, wait, so the, wait. Okay. Uh, our presentation about uh, our country, Italy. 
Next. Uh, sorry, I can't see um, the screen. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, can you see the screen? Huh? Uh, I can't see the second slide. The first? Yes. Now? And now? Now, yes. Yeah, okay. okay. Okay. Italian history. Italy is a country of European Union. It's divided in 20 regions and it's a republic. The nation of Italy was born in 1861 because a long time ago it was divided in many states. In the past, it was an important country in Europe because in Rome, our capital, there is the Pope, an important person for all the Catholics. Federico? In, uh, in 1797, the Italian flag was born in Emilia Romagna, that is a region uh, in the north of uh, Italy. It was uh, similar to the French flag, but inst instead of blue, there is green. The green color stands for our landscape, the white color stands for peace, and the red color stands for the blood of the soldier dead in war. The next, our language. The official language is Italian. This language comes from Federico? an ancient one. Sì, Federico. Leonardo? Leonardo. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can we... I can. Leonardo? Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. Yes, Leonardo. Okay. The official language is Italian. This language comes from an ancient one that is Latin. It was used in the ancient Roman Empire. In fact, Spanish, French, and Romanian are similar to the Italian language, and these nations were called the Neo Latin Sophia. language. Italy is a peninsula. Wait. Wait. Italy is a peninsula shaped like, like a long boot. There are two large islands, Sicily and Sardinia. Most of the Italian territory consists of mountains and hills. The highest peak of the peninsula and also of Europe, Mont Blanc. The Alps to the north are arranged like a natural border, which separates Italy from the European lands. The Apennines from the backbone along the entire peninsula. Only about 20% of the Italian territory is made yes. up of the Po Valley, crossed by the longest river in Italy, the Po, 652 kilometers, with its tributaries. Okay, now Annalisa. Italian culture is Italy's collective heritage of knowledge, full curve of the Roman Empire and seal of the Catholic Church, main point of the many Mediterranean civilizations and numerous artistic movements. Italy has been one of the most flourishing cultural centers in Europe since Ion's time. And uh, Italy is the Annalisa. Yes. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay. So, um, Italy is the country. Annalisa. Yes. Maura. Okay, Annalisa, go home. Okay. Um, I was saying, Italy is the country that has the highest the presence of 55 out of 1,121 UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Okay. 
So the our presentation is finished. Uh, Maura, uh, I don't know if it, she has a problem. So um, you listen, uh, you listen me, Helen. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, it's okay. I don't know uh, what, what what's happened to Maura. Maura, it looks like it's out. But I don't know. So Maura, yes. yes, we can see Maura. Yeah, I can see her too. But she's we can we can to listen, Maura. She's on mute. Um, sorry, but my connection is very bad, very bad, and I can't hear you most of the time. No problem. We have finished. Okay, <laughs> very <Maura>. good. <laughs> I hope but, all went well. They are fantastic. Okay. <laughs> Uh, but thank you. And uh, should we move on? Was it uh, Malta? Um, hello. So hello. our students will present a video, a short video about our school and some places in Malta. And then we have four students who, who will introduce themselves. And we have Hussein who is going to explain what we're going to watch on, in the video before the video, Hussein. Yeah. Hello. Hussein. Put on the camera. Small, me. Yes. Okay. So basically this is a short video by some of my peers about the different locality where students came from and about our school. Can you see the video? Yes. yes.
was our video. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. finally. And yes. I'm gonna yes. gonna stop and so I'm now yes, we we're going to present our students. First we have Kesney. Kesney. Yes. yes. Kesney, can you put on your camera, please? Miss um, Kesney's camera is on. So next we have Hussein. You're on mute, Hussein. Switch on your microphone. At this moment. Yes, it's yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Carry on. So my name is Hussein Abu Hassan. I my age is 14 years old. I love helping people and enjoy a friend. And I enjoy going out with my friends. At, at school, my favorite subject is English. I'd like to do activities I invite you to the people. I like participating on the activities in the school. And I love attending the learning zone because we talk about her. And the most. Uh, Thank you. Second. Next, we have Sherowin. Hello. Um, I just want uh, to say something about me. I live in Cospicua, which is part of the three historical cities in, in Malta and as hobbies or passion that I have mainly is about gaming and sometimes I just go fishing with my family and friends usually with my brother as like cable subjects I like mathematics a lot and uh, informational technology because when I when I grow up I just want to be a computer techno uh, technician and now we're learning zone activities usually I prefer to discuss stuff 
with my teacher, uh, with my teachers and stuff like that. That's really all. Thank you, Sharowen. And last but not least, we have Maruska. Hello, uh, my name is Maruska and I'm in Babar. And uh, I, I like a TikTok. And uh, um, I like gaming. And uh, my favorite uh, subject is retail. And uh, in uh, in the in the uh, learning zone, I I like talking uh, with my teacher. Thank you. So that was our presentation from Walta. Thank you. Thank you. Um, but now we actually let me put on the video. Um, then we have, uh, Chucky. Um, and I don't know whether I should share the video. Uh, <laughs> Helena, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, okay, I'm in a, uh, in a bus stop now. We gave a uh, 15 minutes break here and then go on the trip. It's uh, just time. Uh, actually, first of all, I have to say that our friend from Martinique is in the meeting, I think. Uh, okay, Helena, could you please share my link and then my students will talk by one by one because I think I will go on trip till you finish and maybe my connection goes again. Is it possible for you? Yes, uh, thank right you now. Very much. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you very much. And, um, and just, just uh, before starting, you told that so someone's birthday was it? Whose birthday? It, uh, Lucas. Uh, my my students wants to say happy birthday to him in Turkish. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Turn on your microphones. First, One, tell happy two, three. three. Yes. Can we say? Yes. Start. One, two, three. İki doğdun. İki doğdun. İki doğdun. <laughs> okay, that's it. And after the video, you can introduce yourselves one by one. Don't make Helen tired, please. Okay, guys? <laughs> okay, teacher. Right. Okay. The question, question is whether the introduction should be now because my computer wants okay. to be difficult. Okay. Because yeah, but, it's, not, it's slow, uh, so the link is not... Okay, right but Liva wants to share her presentation and they will talk about yes. that. Is it, okay, Liva, um, see you in a moment. Start, please. Wait. Firstly, we will do our um, presentations. Um, yeah, yes, I'm yes. Start by doing your presentations. Tell your teacher, Helene, to uh, arrange our video presentation, okay? Okay, teacher. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You know your turn. Start, please. Kisses to all. Okay. Hi, my name is Eylül. I'm 13 years old. I'm in the seventh grade. And unfortunately, I'm the fourth and last member of my family. Uh, I love my school, but I can't go into school because of this epidemic. I miss my school, my teachers and my friends. And I think I introduced it myself. And now I will tell you about the 9,000 years old ancient city from the city I will live in. And Diva, can you uh, share your screen? Okay, teacher, please uh, um, give me hello for share screen. Yes, and what was Liva. your name? Liva. Liva. Um, yes. Was, uh, okay. Okay. I am making you a presenter, so you can now, now you can present. Okay, teacher. And it's on the top, I don't know if you know, top all the way to the right, next to the leave button, there's a square with an arrow pointing up. Okay. Perfect, you already I know. I think it's here. Um, it is. Wait a minute. Some... Can you see it? Yes, enlarge it a little. Yes. Okay. Enlarge. 
Çatalı yük. Çatalı yük is very large Neolithic and Catholic age settlements in central Anatolia, which has inhabited approximately 9,000 years ago. It consists two of um, mound side by side in the east and west directions. The architecture of the mound, um, which has a history of about 9,400 years, is interesting. When a family's life um, at home was over, the house was filled with soil and a new was built on it. With the continuous construction of new houses, the 21 meter high mound has been formed until today. Meanwhile, Chatelet was included in UNESCO World Heritage List of 2012, and it's located in the Chumra district of the Konya province. Um, and Liva, can you show the photo of the Chatelet? It is, I think. Yes, and there is a Chatelet photo. Thank All you right. for listening. Thank David, you. Students? Please, one by one. Okay, second student is, I think, Aisha Nida. Aisha Nida, are you hearing? Um, hi, my name is Aisha. I'm 12 years old. My, I, it, Go on, Aisha. Go on. <laughs> I see some connection. I problems. think uh, she the internet connection is low. Yes, I think too. Eylül, Eylül, you read Aisha's turn. Don't wait. Okay, the Sumela monastery built on a steep a life in the foothills of Montenegro, which dominates the Altandri Valley uh, within the borders on the Altandere village of uh, Machka district of Trabzon is known is known as the Maryamana among the people. It is started the, that Sumela monastery was founded by two priests and named Soparnios and Barnabas um, who came here. <laughs> Okay, go to the next next student. Mustafa Jan, I think. Hi, my name is Mustafa Jan. I live in Dar. Playing mobile games and riding a bike, and I'm very happy to meet you. It was an ancient Greek city on the western coast of Anatolia, on the Lonian coast, three kilometers southwest of the Seljuk district of today's Izmir province, and later an important Roman city. Its foundation dates back to Lightstone 8, 6000 BC. It was built by Attic and Lonian Greek colonies to replace the old capital of Arzaw in the 10th country BC. Go on quickly. Yes, my turn, but uh, Liva is not share your screen. Start to talk about yourself oh, first. Yes, okay. Uh, hi guys, I am Ejemides. As you can understand, my hometown, Turkey, uh, I love to listen to music, writing different lyrics, and I'm watching musical movies. My favorite movie is Clouds. I think we can have a good time with you. I'm going to tell you a few things that I will be glad if you listen. The Median Star is a distinctive feature of the Bosphorus skyline. Built on a tiny island located about 200 meters from the shore of Üsküdar. The tower is the main subject to many legends. The most popular legend child is about the Sultan and his daughter. An oracle prophesied that the Sultan's daughter would be killed by a snake bite on her 18th birthday. The Sultan decided to protect her from this misfortune and had the tower built in the middle of the Bosphorus, where she was put to live her life in security and protection. 
Finally, on her 18th birthday, the Sultan brought her a basket of fruits as a birthday gift. Not everywhere of the hidden snake inside the pen writing into the basket, the princess got bitten by the snake and died in her father's arms as foreseen by the oracle. Referring to this legend, the tower got its name as Median's Tower. With a history that goes back to 24 BC, the star has been home to this fancy castle, a house of exile, a prison, a palace of quarantine, a radio station, a customs, post and lighthouse. As a symbol of Uskudar, it was restored by a private company in two cents and opened it as a cafe and restaurant. Thanks for listening to me. Okay, next. Everybody finished their presentations? No, now yes. it's Diva's turn. Yes, go on. I'll start, turn on your microphone. Diva, turn on your microphone. Can you hear me now? I yes, think. exactly. Start. Okay. This is Liva, 13 years old. From Turkey, I am a step Bernard Hermanis girl. I am a crazy about playing volleyball. My favorite hobby is going crazy with music at full world. I would love to know you all. That's so. Okay. I will open my presentation. Okay. I spend those Indian city. First, I will talk about Aspendos Injit City. Aspendos Injit City is a bully boiled by um, romance as an open air theater. He, he has a perfect legend of his own. According to legend, the king of Aspendos has a very beautiful daughter and the king wants to marry his daughter one day. But he does not deem any man worthy of his beautiful daughter. The person who does the most beneficial thing for the people and the city makes the decision to marry my daughter and makes it public. Hearing the news, the twin brothers immediately start working. One of the crosses on heaven, roots and provides water the sea and boils the water passage. The other brother's brother boils an engine tether. An engine tether feature is that the person in the top row can clearly hear the sound of the coin falling to the ground in the middle of the stage. The king was very impressed by the water pass and wanted to give us the other to the brother who built the water gate, but the but, uh, uh, builder of engine theater decides to play because he wants to marry the girl more. In order to prove to the king that the work was successful, the architect whispers from the middle of the stage. As the king walks around the top row, give his daughter to architect of this place. The king who heard it very clearly was very impressed. He is surprised to whom he will give his daughter. The king thinking that both architects desire it divides, divides his daughter in half with a hard sword and gives half to one brother and half to other. This is the um, story about um, Aspendos Indian City. Thank you for listening to us. Okay, I hope you would, you didn't get bored. Thank you, students and Helen. Can you share Thank my you. video, please? I have the video ready and I will show it now. Thank you very much. Can see. 
we can't see the video. We can hear, but we can't can see. see teacher. I don't know. We you can, can, can see too. Oh, you can see. You okay. Can okay. Problem. Okay. Maybe yeah. I can't. Okay. You can see. Okay. Oh, you can see. Okay, fine. Then I'll continue. Can you also hear it? Yes. Yeah.
All right. Thank you for the presentation. Oh, never mind. Um, so I think actually we've uh, been to each country. Sadly, Martinique could not be here, but um, but thank you everybody for all your presentations and introducing uh, yourself. Um, uh, Martinique is here, as far as I know. <laughs> yes, there is a there is a teacher from Martinique in the group. Really, Emile, Emile, or I don't know her name. Dennis, Dennis, are you here? Yes. Good afternoon. I'm here. Sorry for the delay. Okay. Can you hear me? Hello. Yes, we can Hello. hear you. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, uh, I think there has been a, a misunderstanding with the video and with the students. So this is why we are not ready to present you uh, a video on Martinique. We have one. Um, I should ask Ali to, to send it to you if you want to watch it now. But I think otherwise maybe it can be shared on eTwinning and then uh, we can go up and see it because we've already gone over time. So if you have the video now, we can. It would be, all right. Yes, that's a good uh, a good idea. Okay, I agree. <laughs> Thank you. Students, do, we, do you have students here only? Uh... No, we don't have any students because they have uh, left for their training period, training uh, work placement. So this is why. Well, then I don't know. The question is if people have time that we can, I mean, I think it would be nice to watch the video, but it depends if it depends. students and have time because we've. Uh... Yeah, but the problem would be that you w will be able to watch the video, but with any, without any comments of the students or any presentation. So this is why. Mm. So if you prefer, we can send it to you, as you said, and put it on the eTwinning e uh, site. Mm -hmm. It's, it's yes, up to you. To Just let me know. <laughs> then I think maybe that would be a nice idea that we get on an eTwinning, so then we all can come and watch it. Um, all right. All right, if you don't mind. Thank you so much. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, I have a <laughs> Okay, sorry, I I made a, I, I started uh, sending it to you, but whatever. <laughs> oh, you can send it to me. Oh, you, oh, you mean uh, uh, please, uh, from your experience before? Uh, do you normally did you uh, let the students talk in groups or was it just the uh, thank you for now, Phyllis? Sorry, I didn't, I, I couldn't hear you. Uh, no, it's Phyllis, Phyllis I'm asking. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, I, maybe it was my pronunciation. Because we've actually, oh, Phyllis is not here. Uh, I, I can hear now. It's uh, because we actually have uh, got all the lovely presentation. The question is, Thank you for now. Whether then maybe asking students to yeah, like hard anyway. Some of you have similar interests, then maybe some play some similar games. Maybe you want to share some accounts together. Um, or whether it has been a bit late, so maybe we should say thank you for now. And all of you can get access on eTwinning. If you don't already have access to eTwinning, that's a platform. I know. But in that sense, you can also write to each other and chat together on eTwinning. Um, so unless anybody else has anything to add, any uh, teachers, does anybody want to say something? Uh, no, I I Ellen, say, no, Ellen, thank you. Can I say one thing, Ellen? Yes, of course. Uh, um, uh, the students, uh, the, the, do the students know that they will have assignments uh, on the second meeting? Uh, uh, or maybe uh, maybe we will um, 
write the assignment on each evening and they will follow follow that. Yes. What do you think? Will, yes, uh, okay. Because then we can we can have our meeting first and then we can talk together more yes. specifically. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you very much for your patience all. Yes, I would like to say thank you all of you. It was so nice to see see all of you and your presentations. It was very lovely. Um, but yes, thank you for the extra time you also used. And happy birthday to you, Lucas, again. Um, I saw somebody was making a little heart. It's nice. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, thank you, uh, everybody. And uh, good night. If you want, you can stay on, or uh, you can also chat on each one. Um, but yeah, should we say thank you for tonight? Yes, thank you for your great. We thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Good evening to everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Goodbye. Bye bye. See you next time. See you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye bye. Goodbye. Bye bye.